we are going to get down to a lot of the basics, but I want to start with this premise that um, that drum set playing, and really I think all of music is 50% uh, concept and 50% technique. And I know, at least with drummers, they're chasing technique so much of the time, better coordination, better chops, blah, 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 better styles, that sometimes they lack c concept. And for me, concept is just the, the big overarching understanding of the style, the music, the chart, whatever. So um, I hope by the time today's over, is over that your concept, some holes will be plugged in for your concept. And uh, I've invited my dear friend and colleague Jeremy Allen to be with us today to play bass, so we have some frame of reference. Uh, I'm not a real fan of just playing drums by myself. Uh, I think it's an instrument that needs to be accompanying somebody, and of course in most situations I'm in, it starts with the bass. So we're going to have a bass player today, a great bass player. So please uh, help me thank Jeremy Allen. We're going to play a little song, and then we're going to work through uh, the handout. Uh, the second page of that handout, it's really just some bullet points to think about, and we're going to talk about each one of those. And I want you all to feel free to ha ask questions at any time. And of course, what I like to do at my clinics is have uh, hopefully three or four of you come up and play, um, and we can work on all of your elements of your playing. So. We're going to play a little song to get things started, then we'll get to work. Thanks. Okay, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, about melodic drumming and about soloing. And 
I'm sure there are some of you out there, players, who have trouble soloing, and maybe there's some teachers who have problems with your student soloing. So I want to just give you one approach, one tiny little approach to, to drum set soloing. The last page you have on your handout is, is a blues. Nothing, no big deal. But this kind of work, this kind of work is, for me, foundational for drummers. Uh, I think one of the best drum books is the real book. You know, no, no big surprise there, but it's the real book because it has tunes and melodies. And if you as a drummer aren't thinking melodies, or you as a teacher, um, your drummers aren't melodic in their playing, then that's where that really has to be addressed. So if I take a, a look at like this, this blues tune, um, can you sing this for me once? Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, fantastic. Well, I could spend certainly hours with my drummers on this. What would we do? Well, we'd play the melody on the kit, we'd solo over the melody, we'd turn it into a Latin tune, sing it as a Latin tune. I think it's, what key is this? C. The key is C. Two, a one, two. Another thing here is, you know, obviously drummers have to work on their styles, but we can take exercises like this and redefine the style. We can do every tune in the real book swing. We can do every tune in the real book uh, Latin. We can do every, you know, many tunes uh, kind of funk or hip hop. So really all these standard tunes obviously have no boundaries and they're really uh, great vehicles for soloing. What's the quickest way to expand your vocabulary? Listening. Yeah, and listening comes up a couple times on this handout, but it really should be on every line. Listening. If you, if you want to sound like Max Roach or learn Max Roach vocabulary, you've got to listen and transcribe. So for drummers, we have a rich history. Well, all of jazz has a rich history. But uh, drummers, we can just have a blast going back, and we must go back to to all those early drummers, the, the founders of this music for sure, to get our vocabulary happening. Two, one, two, three, four. Now, how many of young players do you hear play this way? A lot. So it's, it's technically correct, but in the mind it's not correct. So here's the mind shift.
much of it is just how you approach it or how your students approach it. And you can tell them to play louder or play softer or dig in more. I'm sure you've all said those kinds of things. But if you really have to figure out, and they have to figure out, and you as players need to figure out how to do that. Can I have someone come out up here and do kind of what I just did? What's your name? Aaron. Aaron. I just want to do no energy and then happy on top of it energy. Just give me those two differences. No energy, happy energy. Even less energy. That's too good. makes your jazz beat, your swing beat, what makes your shuffle different from your swing beat? Um, when I'm playing, the way I think of it is when I'm playing, uh, any time I'm a shuffle is a little bit more dependent on, the shuffle is basically swing with the back, you know, two way. so you have more emphasis on the snare drum, a little bit more of a, it's a more of a consistent, um, you know, consistent thing filling in more of the eighth notes with chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka yeah. chunk, ka Yeah, so the short answer is yeah, a, a shuffle is really two emphasis on two and four. What was going to make your shuffle thicker is if you did embrace two and four, not just on the snare drum, but the bass drum and the cymbal too. Let me sit down for a second, I'll show you. Your, your shuffle was very nice. Um, it was a little on the thin side, so if that were with a big band, for example, the big band would need a little more depth, a little more thickness. So here's how I might approach a shuffle. Your snare drum work was good. Some people, but we'll just start with this. But I want to get some rim on it. That's going to thicken it up. I think you were doing four on the floor with the bass drum, but I'm going to accent two and four. My cymbal, um, I can just play a ride beat, but if I get the shoulder of my stick on two and four, then it, everything gets thicker. So 